Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to build an invoice management database inside of Microsoft Access. This is kind of like one step above using Excel to manage and report on your invoices as Microsoft Access allows us to draw reports and queries directly within the software. And it's just gonna give us more options over Excel. We generated a CSV file for today's demonstration. In your case, you could follow along with your own CSV that you may have exported from your Shopify account or from any invoicing software. And then we're gonna take that data and we're going to import it into Access and then we're going to build our database. Before we get started with this video, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll leave links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. Alright guys, so I'm here on my PC and before we go into Access, let's actually go into Excel just for a moment. So depending on where you exported your CSV from, you're going to have maybe a different set of headers. The important thing here is that the headers match the database that you create inside of Access. Now, since we're going to be directly importing from this right off the bat, this doesn't really matter. But if you already had an Access database set up, then these headers will need to match the headers inside of Access for the data to transfer if that makes sense. So again, we've got our CSV. Just to walk you through this, we have our invoice number, we have the date sold, we've got customer ID, first name, last name, phone, email, address, product name, quantity, unit price, and total price. Okay, so now that you've taken a look at what we have on that sheet, let's open up Access and get started in there. We're gonna start with a blank database here, and we're gonna call this Invoice Management. And let's go ahead and hit Create. So by default, we have Table 1. Let's go ahead and delete that. And once we've deleted that, let's go to the External Data tab and we're gonna click new data source from file and from Excel. So if you're doing from Excel, like I just did, let's go back into Excel for one moment. It's important to save this as a .xlsx and it's gonna import everything from that file. And that's the file we're gonna be using for this demonstration. You can still use a text document, but I find it's easier just to use a .xlsx. So once we've saved that, let's go ahead and find the document, which we have here. Let's press open and we'll press okay. And this is going to do a new table in the current database, which is what we want. Now, essentially, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to verify that all this data is correct. So we have their invoice number, date sold, customer ID, first, last phone, email address, and we have a product name, quantity, unit price, and total price. So let's hit next. Again, it's going through each individual field name, and we're going to have the ID one be the primary access key. And I'm going to let access do this because this is not something that I want to mess with on an individual level. So again, I'll leave this as let access add primary key, and it'll be in the ID column. And then I'm just going to call this table imported data and I'll go ahead and click finish. I'll hit close on this pop up. And now if I double click our imported data, we can see all of our data has been successfully processed in access. The next thing that I want to do is I want to create three tables and these three tables are going to help me better manage all of this information. The three tables that we're going to create are called customers, orders, and products. This is basically going to narrow the information and make it a little bit easier for me to run reports and queries if I would like to at a future time. So in order to do that, we're going to go to create and let's Let's go ahead and make a new table so we can hit table design and we're going to want to import the fields that we want for customers so let me right click and save this and we're going to title this customers i guess we have to write the fields first for this i'm going to enter customer id again it's important here to exactly match the text from our imported data sheet and if i go back over here actually access change this to id so let me remove that and i'll just call this id and then we can match that as a primary key by right clicking in this little square and we'll hit primary key so once we run the query to match everything up it's not going to be prompting us about the primary key so then below that we'll do our customer id and this is what was exported from our software then we'll do first name last name and then phone email and phone Finally, we'll do address. Now I'm going to right click and save. Basically, anytime that you make edits to a table, I would get in the habit of just saving it as it's a little bit easier to work with it that way. Now I'm going to close this down and let's go to create and let's hit query design. So we're going to start with the sheet that has all the data on it. I'm going to double click that and it's going to open it here in the middle of our query design. And I can actually click and drag this to enlarge it a little bit. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take all of this data and we're going to consolidate it down to our customers for only the fields that we just added. Now, before I do that, I might not want there to be any duplicates. So let me change the view here. Again, you can always go to the data sheet or design view. So in this view, we're going to index this. 
If I click where it says index, yes, no duplicate, that's actually what we want. I do not want duplicates. If yours says no, for example, you just double click it and keep double clicking it until it says yes, no duplicates. All right, so what I'll do at this point is I'll drop down this arrow. And again, we wanted the ID and then we wanted the customer ID followed by the first name, last name, phone and email and address. So I'm just dropping down under the field and address. There we go. Okay, now before we continue with this in query design, we're going to turn this into an append query. And here we will drop down this into our tables and we'll hit customers. This is the destination of where it's going to append this information to. I'll press OK. And at that point, we can go ahead and run this query. So I'll click run and I'll select yes. Now, if I reopen my customers table without having to manually do that, it's populated this table with all of our records. And again, since it's on the customers table, it only has the relevant data that I wanted. Now, let's basically go ahead and repeat the exact same things. I can delete that query now and I'm going to do this again for orders and for products. So I'll go to create and we're going to create a table design. Now for this, I want the ID. Again, this is the primary key. We'll right click and we'll make this the primary key. Below that, I'm going to do invoice number. Below that, date sold and below that customer ID. And then I will right click save. We're going to title this orders and then we'll go back into create and let's do query design again. Again, we're doing imported data. So I will click and drag to enlarge this and then let's click append drop down into orders and we'll press OK. Now before we run this, if we want, we can go into orders and see if there's any indexing that we want to do. So for example, we could do customer ID, but since these are individual orders, I'm completely fine with having duplicates because there aren't going to be duplicate orders that are exported from my software. So let's go back to the query. And again, we'll type in the field. So we'll go ID. And then I believe we had invoice number, date sold, and then customer ID. There we go. Let me go ahead and close down my orders table. And let's go ahead and run this query. You go to query design to run it. And we'll hit yes. We'll open back up orders. And there we can see we have all of our orders on this table. I'm going to close down this query and I will say no. And then let's do this one more time. So we're going to go create table design. And this is going to be for products. For this one, I'm going to do the ID. Then I'll do product name. And then lastly, I'll just do unit price. All right. And then I'll right click and hit save. We'll title this products. And then, oh, I forgot to do the primary key. There we go. Now we can save this as products. And there's actually one more table I want to create. So I'm going to do that really quick. Table design. And this one is going to be for the order details. So let's do ID again for the primary key. We'll do invoice number next, followed by product name, followed by quantity. And lastly, I'm going to do total price. And then I will save this as order details. Okay, so we have to run two more append queries and then all these tables will be done and populated. So create, query design, imported data. And I'm actually just gonna do both of these at the same time. Okay, and then let's append. We're going to append this to, we'll start with products. I think we haven't done products yet. So I'll press okay. And just a reminder for products, we need the ID, then the product name, then the unit price. ID, product name, and unit price. Okay, query design and run. Oh, forgot to close it down. There we go, query design and run, we'll hit yes. Let's make sure that one worked properly. So products, okay, that one filled. I'm gonna X out of this query and then I will create another one. So query design, and then we'll go imported data. Again, let's do append. Lastly, we're going to order details. I think you guys are getting the hang of it now. And then based on our selection here, we have ID, invoice number, and then product name, followed by quantity and then total price. And let me close down the order details. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and now we have all of our tables populated. And so now that we've merged everything over, sorry, let me go ahead and delete this. We no longer need our imported data. Let's go ahead and delete this one. Right click and delete. Now we basically have our four different tables. This is going to give us our customers, orders, products, and order details. At any point on any of these, I can enter a new record by hitting the enter key and typing the new record itself. I can also do a new imported data table in the exact same way I did it before and then append that data to these tables. So that's how you might make this sort of modular where you add to it as you do a new export every month. This can help to run accurate reports that can help you make better informed decisions. Okay, let's go into database tools now and we're gonna work with some relationships. So if I go into relationships, let's go ahead and start pulling up our tables here. I'm gonna bring in all four of our tables and let's just enlarge these a little bit. All right guys, so now that we're in the relationship page and we have all of our tables pulled up here, if we compare, for example, the customers to the orders, we have customer ID showing up twice. We need these to have a relationship with each other so that it knows we're not talking about separate things. So fairly easy to do this. We'll start with the orders and customers. I'm gonna drag customer ID onto customer ID. And with that relationship in there, we'll leave everything 
as. We're gonna check enforce referential integrity and I'll press create. Okay, so sorry, I was supposed to leave that unchecked as now that was successful. So we're also gonna have product name and order details and products. So order details and products, I'll drag the product name from here to order details and I'll press create. Then we're also gonna see invoice number twice and that's gonna be in order details and orders. So I'll drag that to here and I'll press create. And now if I move this around, we can see that we've created our relationships. I'm gonna right click here and I'll press save. And at this point we can go ahead and start to make reports if we'd like to. Okay, so let me go to the create tab and let's go to the report wizard for this. So let's say I wanna make an invoice report. So I'll go to orders, that's the table I'm gonna select here and I'll grab all the information that I want from here except for maybe the ID. So I have invoice number, date sold, and customer ID. Actually, sorry, I want order details. And I'm going to add total price. I'm going to add quantity and total price over. Okay. So I've got all the data that I want here. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Here's asking if we want to add any levels. I'm fine with this. I'll hit next again. And I want this to be ascending from the date sold. I'll hit next again. I'll keep this as tabular and I'll check this box as well. So I hit next and let's go ahead and preview the report. And there we go. So we have our order details and this report, again, I wanted basically sales by date is what this gave me. So then it's gonna reflect the invoice number, customer ID, quantity, and the total price of the sale. So I can very easily generate reports similar to this. I could also generate reports that would be ascending from price by customers. So there's a lot of different things that I can do here now that I've created this invoice management system. So that's going to conclude our Microsoft Access tutorial this week. To recap, we showed you guys how to start with an Excel document or CSV, and how to import that into Access. And then from there, we showed you how to break it up into individual tables for organization. Then we created relationships, and then we showed you how to easily create and manage reports. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything that we went over, feel free to drop those in the comments below and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have all the links down below. As our channel grows, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas to make. If there's a video you would like to see, we strongly encourage you to let us know in the comments below. Most viewer commented requests get made into actual videos on the channel. And lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support our channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.